the adversary of, of faith if you, this is part two, if, you know, you may have to go back and, and look at part one. It's going to lead me into part two, and, and part one has laid the foundation of what we'll be talking about this morning. But let's stand. We're going to read our same scripture in Luke 22, 31 through 34. Let's stand for the reading of this word this morning. Sometimes I always like for you to stand and we read the word together. Amen. Let somebody say amen. 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 It's the word. Let's read it. Luke 22, 31 through 34. As we read last week, let's read it. It says, I'm reading from the NSV if you're looking uh, on the screen there. Let's read it together. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, he was the root of our promises. And to die three times, you don't know. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for your word. Thank you. <clears throat> open our ears that we will hear what you have to say to us today. God, we, we open, we welcome your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here among us and dwell on the inside of us. And your spirit is connected with our spirit. So we are open to hear what you have to say to us. We, we cast down every imagination and the thoughts that's in our minds. We take this opportunity to focus on your word. We want a, the living word to come to life as we study. And so, God, we thank you now. And as I prepare and as I stand here, I, I yield myself to you as an instrument of righteousness to be used for this occasion because we are your people. And I pray, God, and, and open up my spirit that you may speak through my mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I encourage you to, to go back and look at part one. We get on the screen and, and we have part two on there this week as well. The adversary of, of faith. We talked about Simon Peter. I won't go back into the history. We, we went through the history of, of, of Luke chapter 22 leading up to the time where, where, where Jesus addressed Peter here. But he says Simon, Simon, the whole Satan demanded to or persuaded or asked permission you know, from God that he may sift you like wheat. And we talked about what it means to be sifted like wheat last week. But, but he said, I have prayed for you. That's what I'll be focusing on today. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. He told Peter, I prayed for you. Even though he understood that Peter would fall. He understood that Peter would deny him three times. And Jesus knew that. But he said, I pray that your faith will not fail. Because Jesus saw Peter's future. He saw what Peter would be, not at the moment when he failed, but he saw beyond Peter's failures, and he looked into his future, and he said, I pray that your faith fails not. As we talked last week, in this teaching that we've done last week, you can go back and look at it, there's three things that Jesus wanted Peter to know when he said this here. Number one, he wanted Peter and all the disciples, not just Peter, but he wanted Peter and all the disciples, all the believers, he wanted them to know that Jesus is the believer's intercessor. He wanted them to know that he was their intercessor, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, the scripture tells us today, interceding on our behalf. He wanted the believers and the Christians to know, he wanted the disciples to know, to turn back to God after falling. After you fall, Peter, he says, Return back to me. And he said this, well, after you have been converted, which means after you have repented, which means after you have turned around, after you have picked yourself up from your failures, about faces means repent. That's a military term. Come back the other way. In other words, come back to me. The book of Acts talks about that, how we're to turn and to turn back to Jesus. He wanted Peter to know, the disciples to know, even though you may fail, even though you have abandoned me, even though you have denied me, repent. And come back. And number three, he wanted the believers and Peter and the disciples to know that once they are converted to strengthen your brothers. And that once you have repented, once, once you have gained your strength, once you have gained your confidence back, now I want you to strengthen your brothers. I want you to minister to your brothers. And he told this to all the disciples. 
But he emphasized pity because pity will become a great leader. And on last week, I also emphasize, as we go to the next minute, I also emphasize how that Jesus made a statement here. Jesus made a statement as we talked about these scriptures in John 10, 28, 29, that no one could pluck us out of the hands of God. He wanted his disciples to know that regardless of what happens in your life, no one, nobody, no spiritual being or no human being can take you out of the hands of God. And it says this, as I put a note, the adversary cannot steal us from God, so he attempts to do what? To destroy our faith. As I laid this foundation. In other words, the devil knew he couldn't steal the disciples from God. But he was determined to destroy their faith. Because the devil even know that he would have to have permission from God to destroy them. And, and only God can allow the devil to do so much. God, the devil can't do anything apart from God allowing it to happen. I guess you said, well, Pastor, you're contradicting yourself. Why do we go through trials and tribulations? God allows it to happen. He allows it to happen to strengthen us. He allows it to happen to make us better Christians. He allows it to happen to make us stronger. So, Jesus said this to his disciples as we talk about faith here. He says, I give them eternal life. Look, somebody said, thank God for eternal life. Thank God for eternal life. And they will never, what? Perish. And Jesus said this, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Praise God. Even though I fall, no one can take me out of the hands of God. Even though I trip up, and even though someone may trip up and sin, you still can't be snatched out of the hands of God. The Bible said we have been sealed to the day of redemption in Ephesians 4 and 30. No one can just snatch you. That's why he was talking to Christians. If you just repent of your sins. Say, repent of your sins and your sins shall be what? Forgiven. So he says that my father has given them to me. And he is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them, what, out of the Father's hands. You remember last week when I went back to the book of Job? And even the devil at that point had to get permission from God to attack Job and to, and to, and to, to attack his health, to attack his family. We know the story of Job, the, of that event. But the devil had to get permission even from God to do that. And God allowed it to happen to prove a point. Imagine that now. God allowed Job. I imagine sometimes when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. But anyway, he allowed Job to go through all that suffering to prove a point to the enemy. To just prove a point to the enemy. But we know the story that God restored everything that he lost and even more. Look at I say, God is faithful. Even though you may lose some stuff, God will restore it. He is able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works. He can restore everything that we love. So the enemy knew that he couldn't just take the disciples. So he said, Peter, the devil, he told the disciples, desire to sift you and destroy you. Therefore, sift means to separate like wheat, to separate the wheat beans from, 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 from the stalk and the rest of it and get all the other stuff from around the beans that they need. He said, the enemy desired to separate you from me. And how, and how would he desire to separate the disciples from God? In faith. That's where he wants to separate us from God. In our faith. Because we're Christians. The Bible says that we have eternal life. So he can't snatch us from God. But he attacks our faith. His strategy is still the same. His strategy is still the same. Let's go to the next one. I want to use this, this illustration here. If you can see this illustration here, y'all know who that is? Superman. Superman. That's a uh, DC comic uh, book. Is that right? I know my, my, what, 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 what Dominic got. He, he giving the history behind Superman. He, he knows that stuff. But, but, but here is a DC comic character, Superman. Of course, we know as you can look at the top, Superman had all this great strength. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. He had this great strength. He was Superman. But Superman had an enemy. What was that enemy? Kryptonite. Kryptonite will weaken him. Kryptonite will, 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 will block his, his powers. He had a weakness. Even though all the strength that he had, he had a weakness. He was Superman as long as he could stay away from the kryptonite. And the enemy would use the kryptonite to weaken Superman, to weaken him. 
When we talk about the adversary of our faith, why the enemy wanted to destroy Superman? I guess y'all said, what does Superman have to do with faith? I'll bring it home in just a minute. How does Superman have to do with our faith? I mean, I'm using it as an illustration here. Superman, what did it say about Superman? He was what? Faster than what? A speeding bullet. Y'all know it. Y'all used to watch this. More powerful what? Than the locomotives. Able to leap tall buildings and what? A single guy. Y'all know it. Y'all got it. Because he was Superman. He was considered what? The man of steel. But kryptonite was his weakness. It could even weaken him or too much of it could he possibly kill Superman. We have a kryptonite of our faith that the devil used even on us today. Because with faith, we're like Superman. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We're like Superman. Greatest healers in me that he is in the world. We're like Superman when we have our faith. We're able to leave tall buildings. Now, now y'all don't go there trying to jump over the building. But we're able to leave tall buildings in a single bar in our faith. We're able to say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Because we're Superman. We're Superman. We're, we're, we're Superman in our faith in God. Because our source of power is God. And faith releases that power. We're like Superman. So the enemy cannot snatch us from, from the devil's hand. He, he cannot take us from God. But he said, I got to weaken their faith. Because once their faith is weakened, then they can't accomplish the things that God want them to accomplish on earth. They'll walk around with doubt and fear. They'll walk around being defeated because they have a lack of faith. So we see kryptonite was, was a weakness. We know some of super, Superman, just, just for our illustration, Superman's strength. He had human strength. He, he had human speed. He had what? X-ray vision. He could see uh, through things. He had X-ray vision. When we have faith, we can see things. Through faith, God show us things. Through faith, we discern things. But when we have a lack of faith, we have a lack of discernment. It says that, that, that he has superhuman hearing. He, he can hear things from, from miles away through buildings. He can hear that. When we are in faith, we can hear God. Amen. But when our faith is attacked, we, have, we struggle hearing the voice of God. But with our faith, when we're strong, we can hear God Amen. when he's speaking. He had heat vision. He could take his eyes and he could burn things. And he could, he could, he could take his breath and he could, have super, he could freeze things. And he had breath that could blow you away. And also he could, he could fly. So our faith kryptonite, going to the next read, our faith kryptonite is unbelief, doubt, and fear. That's what the devil used to weaken us. Unbelief, doubt, and fear. And Matthew 7 17, 20, and 21. Let's go to that scripture. Faith. Jesus said this about, about, about unbelief. Unbelief can, can hinder God from, from moving in our life. As I said on one Thursday night, what God is going to do on earth, he's going to do through man. He's going to use us as his vessel to accomplish his will on earth. Amen? Amen. But we need faith to believe that God can work through us. We need faith to believe that he can use us. Amen. Jesus says this in Matthew 17 and 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. We preached this a couple of Sundays ago. This was when the disciples couldn't heal the man's son. Remember, Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration. He came down with Peter, James, and John, and, and his other disciples couldn't heal the, the, the man's son. And, 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 and they approached Jesus and said, your disciples couldn't heal them. And then later on, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, why we couldn't heal the boy? And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Look at somebody say, that's kryptonite. That's kryptonite. Once the kryptonite got on Superman, he was weak. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't leap over a building. He, couldn't, he, he didn't have the x-ray eyes and, and, and the hearing. Once the kryptonite got a hold of him, then Jesus would tell him, his, his, his disciples, because of your unbelief, you could not accomplish that. And he says this, and verily I say unto you, if you have faith, as grain of what? A mustard seed. Let me say, if you just have a little faith, because Jesus would teach them, my faith is so powerful, all you need.
believe is a little bit of it. A little bit of faith can accomplish great things. A little bit of faith can move mountains. A little bit of faith can heal. A little bit of faith can, give, can, can bring healing and, and, and sight to the blind and, and hearing to just a little bit of faith. He was saying, he just got a little bit of it. Because my faith is so powerful. Because God is powerful. My faith, our faith in him is so powerful. If we just had a little bit of it, he said, you can accomplish great things. I submit to you today, if we just had a little bit of it, look at ourselves, we just had a little bit of it. Just a little bit of it. We can accomplish great things. And it says this to them. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible. Why? Unto you. He said, nothing shall be impossible because all you need is a little faith. So when you study this, 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 this thing about removing mountains, the Jews understood what that means. Removing mountains meant circumstances in my life. It meant the issues that I have in my life. When Jesus talked about removing mountains, they understood Jesus was talking about removing the circumstances and the obstacles that lie before me in this life. Say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and have no doubt. But believe whatsoever you said, it come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you said. Just a little faith. He said you could have healed the boy. Just a little faith. Just a little faith. And then Jesus went on to say in verse 2, how about this go not but by what? Fasting. Praying what? And fasting. As we talk about this message, prayer and fasting goes together. Praying and fasting and faith all works together. You need faith to pray. And you need, you, you need faith to, and God to be able to, to pray. But you, but, 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 but you need prayer to activate faith. Yes. So they work kind of hand in hand. Yes. Yes. But the devil understood. So, so, so he has this quote tonight that, that, he, that he's trying to throw on you. Because see, you Superman. With faith, you know you Superwoman. So, 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 so to cripple you and to hinder you while he dies is to destroy your faith. Little things he throw at you. God not going to do that for you. You know, God, you, it's, been, it's been days now. You ain't seen no answer yet. It's been years now. You don't see the results yet. God, see, see God is not going to do that for you. Doubt. Somehow, the disciples, God had already originally, Jesus had already originally given them the power to heal. We talked about that week. They already had the power to heal. He sent them out. He gave them the power. And now, all of a sudden, they don't have that power. You know why they didn't have that power? Even though Jesus gave them the power and they went about and they healed and they, and they, and they, and they cast out demons. You know why now they didn't have the power? Could Jesus address it here in verse 24? He's addressing the one. So you got to pray and fast. You may have healed yesterday, but you can't stop praying. You can't stop fasting. We may have had some results today. You may have some results in January from your fast and your prayer. But guess what? You got to continue to fast and pray in February, March, and all throughout the year. Jesus said, you can't stop. I gave you the power you was able to heal. Now you couldn't heal. And they asked him, why? He said, because of your fasting and praying. Did somebody say kryptonite. kryptonite. Prayer, Prayer protects you from the kryptonite. Prayer. Fasting protects you from the kryptonite. The unbelief, the doubt that the enemy is trying to bring you. Mark 11, 23, 24. We're familiar with this scripture. Very familiar passage of scripture. Jesus said, for girl, I said to you that, that whatsoever... So that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast to the sea, shall have no what? Doubt in his heart, but shall what? Believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. He shall have what? Whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things ever you desire when you pray, what? Believe that you receive them, what? And you shall what? Have them. When we as Christians, when we grow in Christ, we learn what to pray for. Because the Bible says we ask anything according to his we let me tell you something. We got, we got, we, we, this faith, this faith that we have is awesome and powerful. Because I'm learning, I'm learning some things here. When we pray, we pray God's will be done. God said it shall be done. I don't care how I look in the natural, it shall be done. But we got to protect ourselves from the kryptonite. Because the devil would try to set us up. He knows he, know he can't have you walking around with strong faith. With strong faith, do you know what you can do if you walk around with strong faith? Do you know what, what, what messes of hope can become if we all walk in strong faith? Just a grain of a mustard seed? Do you realize what we can do? Do you realize the souls that can be saved? Do you realize we can just take over God's heaven? Do you realize what we can do in faith? Demons cannot stop. 
stand in your presence because of faith. Why do you think we have an adversary of our faith? He can't take us. He can't steal us. He can only attack our faith. Because faith separates us from God. But no man can pluck us out of his hand. It separates us in a matter of we lose our confidence in God. That's what I'm talking about. And that becomes a separation. Hmm. But with faith, I can do all the things through Christ who strengthens me. I got a family issue, but by faith, I'm believing God is going to happen. By faith. I remember we were, we were, we were praying for, 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 for the college ministry. And we're still praying for college ministry for God. God had opened doors. How many of you know that God would open doors? We ask God to open doors. And I, 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 I have to kind of say, God, okay, we've got to pray specifically now. God, well, doors are open, but we just said open doors. All these doors open. I'm like, God, we don't have, we don't have the labor to, to do all of this. But we've been praying for, something for, for just an open door to go over on the campus of St. Augustine College. Just this week, me and my son went over there again and sat down with the dorm director. And he said, I want y'all guys to come as much as you want to. Amen. So we made an agreement on how often we could come over there. Amen. You know, he said, now, I can't guarantee you that you're going to have a room full of students. So we understand. And we start with two or three. That's okay. We got our foot in the door. That's what we prayed for. By faith, you all prayed. <laughs> Open the door. My son could get an excellent plan and present it to him when they liked it. I said, okay. And, it's, and, and we use wisdom. Because we're not coming in with just a Bible to beat people over the head. We're coming to address some academic needs, to bring speakers in that can address some of the issues that they are having. Mm -hmm. But why are we doing that? Do you know Christ? Amen. How are you doing, bro? How are you doing today? Yeah. You see that door? Yeah. Yeah. But because, he, said, he said, I'm glad I, I'm working with y'all guys because I didn't want nobody just coming. He said, I, 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 I kind of hesitated because I didn't want nobody just coming here with, with just preaching the word. Because I know these guys. He said, I know these students. He said, they just going to walk by. You know, by today, they ain't coming in there. I say, but we have a strategy. Faith. When you pray God's will be done, it shall be done. Faith. I was talking to a person the other day. It, it could have hurt my feelings, but I knew what they was talking about. A person, they, they, they for me with this church, and they know that we have good people here. But sometimes we make statements not understanding what we're saying. They were telling someone else about the church. They said, yeah, it's that church over there. It's that storefront church. It don't look like a church. But, you know, it's a storefront church. They got good people, but it don't look like a church. It's just a storefront church that's sitting off New Ben Avenue. And I was listening to that. Well, we are a storefront church. That's why the world labor. But I was saying that physically. But I was saying to myself, we the church. And I'm not storefront. Yeah. The building may be storefront, but we are people of faith. We are the church. But I understood. I, I didn't. I didn't remove. I didn't. I didn't go. I understood what they were saying. They were trying to describe the building, but they didn't understand that we are the church. You can look at the building and call it storefront. Look, someone said there's some power inside this building. We got some supermen and superwomen inside this building. People of faith inside this building. Ready to leave tall buildings with a single bow. Do you have faith? But well, there's an adversary of our faith. Do we think we will just pray and ask God, oh God, give us this, give us that. Let us open door here, let us go to this community, let us win souls. That the enemy going to sit back and just let us walk into Jericho. No, we're going to have to march around some walls six times on the seven day march around seven times, praising God, believing in God, praying and fighting and doing spiritual warfare, and then the walls will come down. Amen. Look, somebody say, Jesus will tell the disciples, it takes faith. It takes faith. But he told Peter, I, I pray for your faith because I want you to know there's an adversary of your faith that wants to destroy your faith. Jesus said, What things have you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Faith. Why does the adversary, adversary wants to steal or destroy our faith? Let's go to Hebrews 11 chapter, which just talks about the heroes of faith. I want to use some of those examples from, from that chapter. Why the adversary wants to destroy our birth? Why, why is he out to steal, to kill, to destroy? He, he really wants to destroy our faith. Why did the devil go through all that he goes through to try to hinder our faith? Mm -hmm. When we read Hebrews chapter 11, we'll see why. Because with faith, you can do great things. 
With faith, we can do great things. Jesus will often sometimes ask, do you believe I can do this? Because all things are possible to those who believe. Do you believe I can do this? You pray, but do you believe it? You pray, but do you believe it? And I look at Hebrews chapter 11. And it talks about faith. Let me give a definition. It says, for faith is, is the assurance of things. What? Hope for the conviction of things not seen. In other words, faith is believing God for the things that you do not see in the natural. But you know by faith that they do exist. Yes. Amen. I challenge you in your faith. How do you know God exists? Have you seen him physically? By faith. How do you know you have the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you? Have you seen the Holy Spirit physically? No. By faith. How do you know the Bible is real and the Bible is a true inspired word of God? How do you know that? By faith. By faith. Faith. It's ability to believe God. To believe God for something unseen that you know exists. You don't see it, but by faith, you know it exists. You pray God's will be done. You don't see it in the natural, but by faith, you believe you already possess it. Now, faith is not a magic wand that we can use, name it, claim it. God, I want me a Rolls Ross in the Bentley. That's not faith. That's foolishness. Because that's not praying God's will be done. Amen? God may say, well, you, you can do just as good as a Honda, my brother and my sister, as you can in a row off. It's going to get you from point A to point B. Now, bless God, let's get out there and save some souls. I gave you transportation. Faith. Praying God's will be done. Mike. Praying God's will be done. He said, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction is nothing, for by it, people of the old receive accommodation. Commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by what? The word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are what? Visible. By faith, we know that God created the heavens and earth. Have you, were you there when he created it? No, you were not. But by faith, you believe that he spoke and the world came into existence. Amen. By faith, you were not there, I was not there. But we believe it. Faith. Faith. He says this, verse 6. Why the enemy wants to attack our faith? The Bible says this in, the, in, the, in, in the Hebrews 11 6. And without faith, it's what? Impossible. Impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he what? Exists. Yes. And that he is a reward of those who seek him. Yes. King James said, diligently seek him. Faith. First of all, we got to believe what? That God exists. Yes. How do we believe that he exists? Through faith. Have you seen him in the natural? No. But I believe through faith that he exists. But he makes himself evident to us when we get to know him. By faith. This is why the devil fights us. Because he knows we can accomplish great things in faith if we just believe. I know I'm not going to finish this today. But somebody has too much to finish in two days. Including Sunday anyway. We're talking about faith. Listen to what it says here. By faith... Noah, being one of God, concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, and that comes by faith. Here's Noah. God, the, the world was evil. The world, I mean, I mean God had, had this one time, God said he just, just hated he even created mankind because it was just so evil. So much evil, God said, I'm going to destroy, destroy this world. So he, so he told Noah, Noah, build this boat. Now keep in mind, when you do your history, the place that Noah built the boat was not near water, nowhere near ocean, nowhere near lake. It was out in the middle of nowhere near water. And at that time, they have seen no rain. The earth watered the crops from the ground. So they've seen no rain. But here's this man talking about building a boat, and you think about it, they've seen no rain. They're near no water. And it took years. Can you imagine the faith that Noah needed? People come up and say, you foolish man. You're going to build a boat. We ain't never seen that much water in this earth. And you're going to build a boat that side? You foolish man. They laughed at him. Made fun of him. But Noah was a man of what? Faith. All he knew, he had never seen no rain. All he knew, God said it. And if God said it, I'm going to believe it. Amen. And as they laughed at him and as they joked with him, he kept building that boat. Mm -hmm. 
They made fun of him. He kept building that boat. They called him names probably. He kept building that boat. Why? All the things he know, I've seen no rain. I'm not near no water. I don't see it in the natural. God said it. I'm just going to believe it. Why? Because of faith. Faith is believing God for something you have not seen. But yet you believe it exists. Noah have not seen rain. He have not seen it. But he just believed it exists. If God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Why? Because he's God and I'm just going to believe him. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. That's why the enemy attacks our faith. You're a powerful man and woman and child if we walk in faith. There's nothing God can't do through this ministry if we walk in faith. Oh, faith says, yeah, on the outside of the building, we may be a storefront today, but tomorrow we won't be a storefront. Why? By faith. Oh, oh hallelujah. I'm about to speak in tongues. Well, hallelujah. I mean, I mean, I mean, faith says, we might have a couple of uh, 30, 40, 30 people here, 25 people here, but faith says, this place is going to be filled up. Why? By faith. I don't see it. I do see it in the spirit, but in the natural, we don't see it. But by faith, I believe it already exists. Someone ought to give God a shout of praise. All these disciples will raise up churches. I mean, God would use them to, to inspire, to write the word of God that we're reading today. These were men of faith. And God also used great women of faith to accomplish his will on earth. There's nothing on earth that we cannot accomplish according to God's will by faith. I always pray, God, this is your church. It ain't my church. I'm just your servant. And I mean, I mean, whatever, this, this represents you. As long as we live right and live holy and do right, God, this is your work. You know, God, I mean, I mean, this represents you. If you want us to stay like we are, God, it represents you. Your name is, I'm going to go down and put Jesus all down this hall. Where is it? Everybody will know it's you. As long as we live right, we represent God. Remember that. But by faith, whatever we need, according to the will of God, the summer enrichment program, by faith. You can fill this place up by faith. And we can move on somewhere else and we're going to need more space anyway. By faith. Amen. By faith we need a nursery. But it's going to happen. I don't, we, don't, we, we see it in the spirit, but we don't see it actually in the natural because we're still in this building, but we know it exists. Amen. Somewhere the building already exists. Amen. If not, it's going to be built. But somewhere yes. Yes. it already exists. We don't see it in the natural, but we see it in the spirit because we are people of faith. And the devil attacks our faith because he knows that we are powerful That's right. if we just believe. Amen. Then they start attacking our families. How, how he bring the kryptonite, he attack your family. The stuff that's close to you. He, attack, he attacks your job. All that is just to bring down. He attacks your health. All of that just to bring down. So the Bible said that the enemy anyway is an accuser of the brother. He goes before God like he did Joe. Joe, God, if you just attack his health and he'll cuss you. Just take your hands and move your hands and let me attack his health. And I'll show you. That's what the devil does. I'll show you that they don't have faith. Jesus, I'll show you God they don't have faith. Let me, let me attack their finances. I'll show you they don't have faith. Let me attack their family. I'll show you they don't have faith. That's how the kryptonite comes. Look at somebody and say, we are people of faith. Yeah. We are people of faith. The Bible said without faith it's impossible to please God. Romans 4, 18 and, and, and 21. Got about five minutes and we'll close out with this scripture. Talk about Abraham and the faith of Abraham. It says, who against hope believe in hope? Who against hope believe in hope? In other words, it was a hopeless situation. You don't believe it? He was 100 years old. Now God told him he was going to have him and him and Sarah Gonna have a baby. She about 90. He's 100 years old. They're gonna have a baby. 100 years old. Believe me, saints, that takes some faith. His organs are dried up. That takes faith. That's what he's talking about. Against hope. That's what he said. Against hope. Against all odds. Against my body being the way it is. Against all of that, I still have what? Hope. In other words, Abraham said, I see what I look like in the natural. It doesn't look good. But I'm still believing God. Amen. 
Because if God said it's going to happen, bless God it's going to happen. He said I was going to, I was going to have, 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 have that son, the Isaac, and it's going to happen because God said it. I don't know. I mean, I'm 100 years old. He'll do something. He'll, he'll figure it out somehow. This was the same Abraham who took his son up to be, to be sacrificed. God, God gave him Isaac later. Remember Isaac? Gave him Isaac later. And, and then God gave him a son. Then God come back to you and said, well, well, I'm going to kill him. Can you imagine that in your mind? Some of us would have flipped out. We waited, we prayed for 25 years for the son. God finally gave him the son. And now God said, I'm going to take him from you. We would have flipped out. But Abraham went with his son up to the mountain to sacrifice his son. And God just wanted to see where his, where his heart was at. Was he willing to give up everything in life for the sake of, for the sake of God? So we know the story. As he was giving the sacrifice to his son, God said, hold it. There's a ram in the bush for you to sacrifice. And he was known as, what? Well, Jehovah John. But Abraham said this. He said, even if he slay my son, this is faith. Catch this. I know he has the power to raise him from the dead. Ooh, somebody should be shouting hallelujah right now. Against hope. That's why against hope he was. Believed in hope. He understood. Even though they look slim and the natural is not going to happen. And then the Bible said that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. The spoken word, so shall thou see me. He believed the word of God. Faith couldn't by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. And being not what? Weak in what? Faith. Listen, I said we can't be weak in faith. <laughs> Give me 12 people. 12. Jesus took 12 disciples. One of them was a devil. But he took 12 disciples and 11 and they replaced the one. But he took the 12 disciples and they turned the world around. Twelve. He just taught them about faith, faith, faith. Believe that God can do it and he can. Do you believe that I can do it and I can? Church, do you believe? And he can do it. Do you believe souls can get saved? Let me tell you something. God says this. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And because he hears us, he gives us a desire to petition that we desire him. You know, that's why he says, anything we ask, he said, if we, uh, anything we ask, this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is the confidence, he said, that we have in him. Whatever we ask, he'll give to us if we do those things that are pleasing in his sight, which means God would do anything for us according to his will. So that brings me back to this point. I can pray. God Help me to save, well, lead. I can't save anybody. Jesus, lead, but you know what I mean. Help me to lead people to Christ. When you pray that prayer, and you believe that prayer, and God said it in his word, you remind God, you said, now we got to do something because faith is an action word. Faith without works, as Ray says, is what? Dead. I was, I was, he always said it, so I always point that back to Ray. <laughs> faith without works is what? Dead. So we got to have faith. Well, faith, believe I'm speaking faith. I don't want us to get to Think that because I'm, I'm preaching faith that we just believe it and it's going to happen. No, faith is an action verb. Abraham had to do something. Yeah. Yeah. At 100 years old, Abraham had to do something. God told him to go to a foreign land. Abraham had to go. He had to what? Act. Noah had to do something. He told him to build a boat, but Noah had to get a hammer, nails, whatever they had, some wood, and he had to do what? Build a boat. So when we pray, God, I want to be a soul man. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to happen. Yeah. And you know what? This church will fill up so much. We're going to, be, we're going to, have, we're going to have faith. Just believe God. We, 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 today, we got to find somewhere to go. Yes. The be exact faith will tell us, start looking now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't see it in the natural, but start looking now. Yeah. Because we believe that it exists and that we possess it. Do you understand why the enemy now wants to destroy our faith? Mm -hmm. That's why. And the Bible says in closing, he says this, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, what? Dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through, is that clear tonight? Unbelief. But was, what? Strong in his faith, giving God the glory, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to uh, perform. Look at somebody say, I'm a man, I'm a man. If you're a man, say man. If you're a woman, say woman. I'm a man or a woman what? of faith. Tell yourself that. I'm a man or a woman of faith. If you said both of them, we got to pray after service. 
praise God. Let's stand. Let's stand and give God some praise. Amen. Faith. But Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, he understood what Peter would go through. But Peter was to be a leader of the church. And God needed to, Jesus needed to establish his faith. He knew he would suffer. He knew he would go through. It was humiliating. It, it, was, it was tough on him to deny Jesus. You think that was joyful for him? No, it wasn't. He wept. He grieved. Because he loved Jesus. But he only knew how to fight in the natural. He didn't know how to fight in the spiritual. And Jesus knew, I got to teach you how to fight in the spiritual. But this is a spiritual war. It's not a natural war. And it's going to take faith. Faith and prayer. Jesus taught his disciples much on faith and prayer. When I say faith, when I say prayer, I include fasting with them. They come together. But faith and prayer, he taught his disciples because he knew they would need it. But he also warned Peter. He said, the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed, Peter, that you won't lose your faith. You might fall, but you won't lose your faith. Somewhere deep inside of you, Peter, that faith is going to rise up. Somewhere deep inside of you, it's there. But I pray that your faith fail you not. Even though he knew he was going to fall. Even though he knew that Peter was going to deny him. But he wanted people to know there's an adversary of your faith. And I say that to us this morning. There's an adversary to our faith. We can preach faith, but we got to live faith. But there is an adversary to their faith. But the enemy is going to bring everything at you he possibly can to create doubt. Because he wants us to be like Peter. He wants us to live in the natural. He wants us to fight in the natural. But Jesus said, no, i got to let Peter go through this. Because that's the only way he's going to learn that he can't fight in the natural. Peter loved Jesus. I think he really meant and said, Jesus, I go to prison for you. I die for you. He cut a man ill. He really meant that. But when the pressure came, when the pressure came, he couldn't stand because he only knew how to fight in the natural. But he became a person that knew how to fight in the spirit. That same Peter said, be sober. Be vigilant. Because you have to serve the devil like a roaring lion. Walking about seeking, seeking who he may devour. Now this same Peter said, resist him steadfast in that same Peter, he got it now. He understood this is a spiritual battle. But he know in faith, there's nothing we can accomplish. Let's lift our hands as we close out in prayer. Hallelujah. Faith. God, if we're struggling in our faith, we pray as the man prayed and as he said to Jesus, Jesus, I believe, help me in my own belief. Father, we thank you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the, is the ability to believe you, God, for something we don't see, but we know that it exists. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the source of our faith. Faith is nothing without the source. You are the source of our faith. Because we know that you can do all things. There's nothing you cannot do. You're the creator of the heavens and earth. It has been established. You said that you can do all things. So we stand here today, God, believing you, trusting in you. I pray that our confidence has been increased today. I pray that we will leave here with more faith than we ever had before. I pray that there's any doubt or unbelief or fear. We know fear is an enemy of faith. Fear is faith in reverse. So we come against a spirit of fear. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. So we come against fear this morning. We come against doubt. We come against unbelief. We believe in you for some things in this ministry. And we believe it's going to come to pass. But also we are believing you for things in our own individual lives. And I believe that will come to pass once we pray and learn your will for our life. So we thank you now. God, someone may need healing this morning. I pray for, for healing to take place. It's by faith, God. We know that you are a healer. By your stripes, we are healed. 
someone may have a financial problem or financial need, God, I pray that that door will be open, God. I, I pray that that need will be met, God. Someone may need a promotion. Someone may need a job. I believe in my faith that it shall happen. God, we believe in you. We're thanking you right now for the soul that's going to come into the kingdom. The soul that's going to fill this room, God. We give you praise right now, God. Give you glory right now, God. We thank you, God, for the college students, God. We believe in that they're going to give their life to Christ, God. We will minister to their, their physical needs, but also to their spiritual needs. We believe in God. That we can just ignite five to ten students on their campus. They can take their campus over. It's not our job to take the campus over. It's our job to ignite just the twelve and let them do the work of the ministry. And so, God, we thank you right now for your anointing. You spoke to me. You spoke to me in prayer. This church would never be the same. And we believe it this day, Father. It would never be the same from this day forward. So we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name.